Bangladesh has come a long way in its process of development, which is widely acknowledged. However, in many social and economic indicators, it still has lots of grounds to cover to sustain the developmental gains and continue the growth trend. In the last two decades, Bangladesh has made significant progress in Human Development Index. Now, the country is well on its way to achieve many of the Millennium Development Goals. But in this progress, has everyone come on board or are there people who are left behind? Bangladesh has ratified the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Actually, Bangladesh was one of the first countries in the world to ratify that uh, convention. Uh, now, uh, as part of this convention, children are entitled to um, have good education, you know, to have access to uh, quality basic education. They have the right to health. They have the right to be protected against all forms of violence, exploitation and abuse. Um, they have the right to be registered at birth, etc. Level 3 monitoring, in a way, is an approach that allows to verify that children are effectively covered by a range of essential services that they need in order to you know, claim and ha enjoy their rights. Uh, through this approach, uh, we are trying to assess the bottlenecks which can be either supply related or demand related, which uh, affect the capacity of a child to be effectively covered by a service. To begin the process, UNICEF conducted a four-day exercise of level three monitoring in the coastal district of Pola to train local staff and partners, followed by interaction with local community workers and mothers in the most deprived areas. Level one is about our knowledge of the situation, which I think we know pretty well. Level two is about the inputs that we are and the outputs that we are achieving. For instance, we know how many health workers are there, that the cost of um, providing supplies. Level four, we actually know that if these are passed through a health system, through education system, it should produce the desired result in terms of educational learning and achievement. But then that you would need time to wait for about three, four years to be able to now check if your inputs are yielding results. And so that gap, we're closing the gap between level two, which is inputs, and output and level four which is outcome with the introduction of level three the level three enables us to see close to real-time bottlenecks that if you remove you can see the progression towards level four bulaki durugam deep jila is a ma osi sampurkito the bhuno company nama dekhti bachi the epa the pc as a birth decision tipo to hochana ama the pc prime education ama the pc as a can drop out from Kaku Bessi, the Bisha Gular Mul Karangulu, Igulo Berierbe, by Karangulu, the Amra identify Kotepari, by Erpale Amra, a Sombabo Samathan, Masubesh Kotepalbo. In the level three monitoring process, most deprived Upazelas of the district are first identified. Then, evidence based and high impact interventions as tracers are selected. For each tracer, scale-up strategy, levels of coverage, and the indicators are defined. Data is collected and values to indicators are assigned. The weakest link in the chain of determinants, which can be defined as priority bottlenecks, is identified and constraints are determined. Finally, corrective action for the bottlenecks are taken. Every six months, the status of the corrective actions have to be measured. The performance of each intervention would be analyzed according to availability, accessibility, utilization, adequate coverage, and effective coverage. Bangladeshi Dukin Prante, Bola Shadur Bojalar, Odine, Uttudigudi Union, L3M, exercise program, Etara Jori Purichalana Kurse. 
এই জন্য আমরা খুব গর্বিত শিশু ওর অধিকারগুলোকে নিশ্চিত করবার জন্য এবং তাদের স্বাস্থ্য সেবা বিভিন্ন পরিষেবাকে নিশ্চিত করবার জন্য এবং মাতৃ মৃত্যু হার সম্পর্কে জানবার জন্য এবং একে রোধ করবার জন্য আমি মনে করি এই জরিপটি অত্যন্ত ফলপ্রসূ হবে এবং আগামী দিনে আমাদের কর্মপরিকল্পনা গ্রহণ করার ক্ষেত্রে এটা একটা যুগান্তকারী ভূমিকা পালন করবে বলে আমার দৃঢ় বিশ্বাস এই সিস্টেম অব্যাহত থাকলে আমাদের প্রত্যেকটা মৌজায় অর্থাৎ প্রত্যেকটা গ্রামের আমাদের ছেলে মেয়ে এবং আমাদের যে নিউট্রিশন যে সমস্যা আমাদের যে ফ্যামিলি যে সমস্ত ডিজিজ এবং বাচ্চাদের যে ডিজিজ এবং আমাদের বাচ্চাদের যে লেখাপড়ার যে নিয়ম নীতি আমরা ইউনিয়ন পরিষদ জানতে পারবো আমাদের সরকারও জানতে পারবে UNICEF Bangladesh has looked at using the Tanahashi model to identify the key coverage indicators for an essential intervention and to monitor the level of those indicators. And the idea is that when you can construct sort of the baseline of those different coverages, you can see what is the biggest drop-off. And that biggest drop-off in service helps you zone in into that um, priority action. The last few days actually going into the field and asking service providers and asking mothers questions made you realize that yes, a lot of the bottlenecks that you think do exist, but then a lot of them that you never thought about exist as well. তো আমরা এরকম করে দাঁড়ে দাঁড়ে প্রতিটা ঘরে ঘরে গেছি প্রতিটা জায়গায় কাজগুলি করছি এবং কিছু আছে সচেতন তারা করে ঠিক মতো কাজগুলো চালায় যার কিছু আছে একটু অসচেতন এবং গ্রামের একটা ব্রান্তি ধারণা আছে একটু কুসংস্কারও আছে তো এই কাজটার মাধ্যমে আমি মনে করি যে এখানের স্থানীয় সরকার এনজিও ফোরাম তারপরে মেম্বার চেয়ারম্যান সবাইদের কি একটা সচেতনতার ভাব পাওয়া গেছে যে না এই কাজগুলো করতে হবে আয়রন খাইলে মা সুস্থ থাকবে বাচ্চা একটা সুস্থ হবে আমরা যে ছয় মাসের বাচ্চা বাত রেজিস্ট্রেশন সম্পর্কে বলি না এই একটা কথা কিন্তু এখানে বাত রেজিস্ট্রেশন করতে হয় তারপরে এক বছরের বাচ্চারা আমরা এটা করি না যেমন টিকাগুলি সব দিছে কি না এটা সম্পর্কেও আমরা মানে জানতে পারছি নতুন করে তারপরে হচ্ছে ছয় বছরের বাচ্চা স্কুলে গেছে কিনা স্কুলে যায় কি না স্কুলে ভর্তি করছে কি না সেই সম্পর্কে এটার ভিতরে অনেক তফাত আছে actually justify why UNICEF had decided to decentralize and create different offices to be closer to the people. Working in the communities, going to the household, we see that there are many good people in Bangladesh. There are many committed people in Bangladesh who want their basic needs in life and their rights to be fulfilled. And in the last four days, we've been working with the community, listening to the mothers and the children and the community leaders to ask the question, what is the problem? what is not happening, who is not doing their work. And now that we know all this information, we're going to process that, and that is going to guide our programming. And every six months, we'll come back to the same location to check whether what we call corrective actions are working or not. And if they are working, we'll be able to know that we are making progress. If they are not working, we will change our strategy together with government and the community and make sure that the right things are happening at the right time for people. Well, we think that it's also an approach which can be very helpful in providing a sort of reality check uh, as to whether the major investments which are being made by the government and the development partners in improving the uh, coverage of basic services, that this, all these investments are actually producing the right results. Uh, and again, particularly for the poorest uh, segments of the population. Level 3 monitoring brings knowledge that enables government and partners to close the gaps in terms of availability, accessibility, utilization and adequate coverage of the services for the community and most importantly, the effectiveness of the services. So. The governance becomes good governance. It is not a governance that is top-down. It is a government that is engaging.